السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's receive the guests. I mean Ramadan appropriately. Da'una nastaqbilu al-dayfa bima yaliq. Ramadan is a guest. And this guest is coming in a few days. So I will be inshallah addressing you for the coming few minutes. How could be one of the appropriate way to welcome this guest? Or actually, maybe what I will be highlighting is how important this guest is and why it is a guest. So therefore, do your best to welcome it in your own way. أقول وبالله التوفيق by the will of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Now, why Ramadan is a guest? At least from my point of view. It comes once a year. It's 
is not something that always, number one. Number two, who sends these guests? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah who decided that this guest is supposed to be hosted by us. So it's not any guest. It's the very special divine guest, if I may put it in this way. Why do we need this guest? Simply because we have a problem. We need it. We need it. Because Ramadan is a special formula. It's a special software. It's a special environment that we'll have an idea about it. And we have a lot of problems we need to fix. So therefore, one of the ways that, at least in my own words, uh, one of the ways that I give a definition, my own definition for Ramadan is, it's an mandatory or obligatory annual rescue course. Dawrat Inqad Sanawiyya. It's a divine mandatory annual rescue plan or course. As if, as if, that it's very clear, or let's make it another way. Allah knows that we have weakness points. Allah knows that we do forget a lot. Allah knows that we have a lot of gaps in our lives. Allah knows that we forget. Allah knows Allah all of the is good. So therefore, He designed this guest to be mandatory. So it's fard. It's an obligation. I have no choice to say no. Type. As long as it's a mandatory and obligatory. So I have no choice to discuss it. Let's see what benefits I will be having from this obligatory mandatory guest. It's a guest, yes. But I have no choice to refuse it. Okay, let's delve into this guest, which is a gift as well. It's a guest that contains a big gift. Now, for example, in our life, when Ramadan comes, it's one of, I'm just highlighting quick examples from the direct benefits. I'm addressing the logic now, I'm addressing the society. I'm not speaking philosophy now. Simply, we, we can make it very, 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 very simple. Allah commanded us, by the will of Allah, and there is a khair, close the file, start fasting. That's it. We can do it, by the way. No problem. It's part of the great Islam. And that's it. But this way of addressing might not solve a lot of problems for the youth. And maybe for some of ourselves. Maybe we have a little bit, it, it's heavy guests. Why should I? What kind of benefits? Why, when, how? All of kind of satanic whispering that could be leaking into the inner feelings for you, for your household, for your family, for your kids. So therefore, my job is just to help you how to justify, how to appreciate, how to know in depth how great this guest, i.e. gift is. So this is why I'm doing this in this way. So, in our lives, Ramadan helps us to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the amazing divine design of the taraweeh and the timing. One of the benefits that we get, it's an amazing opportunity to reschedule our life. How many of us, because they started a new job, they moved in a new house, they started a new style of life, a new location, a new whatever, they lost their nice daily schedule, such as going to the masjid, at least in Fajr and Aisha, at least. Out of a sudden, wow, long time I have not attended the Fajr. Long time I have not. Ramadan comes, by default, everyone goes to the Fajr. By default, everyone goes to the Aisha. By default, no one discusses the Aisha. The discussion is, who is the loser that he might be losing the taraweeh? Isha and Fajr at Masjid is by default. Wow. So it's rescheduling our lives according to the time prayer. It's a big na'ma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan, it pushes. Reconnect with Allah. Reschedule our life. Reconnect us with our dear ones. Because of the iftar, we are gathered. How many of us, because of this very tough materialistic life, we don't eat together. 
We don't gather. I'm talking about families now, <laughs> not talking about colleagues and friends and uh, brothers and all. Just the family itself. Ramadan reconnect the family. Ramadan reconnect the brotherhood inside the masjid. I'm talking about the direct, direct, tangible benefits that we have from Ramadan. Right. Ramadan, one of the beautiful examples you can look at it, which is the same as applicable on the five time prayers. It's like gas station. Five, five prayers that we pray. We are on a highway. We are in the highway of this life. We had no choice of existence. Allah decided that you and me will exist. We existed. That's it. The decision has been made a long time ago and don't discuss it. <laughs> we have tools. We have the power. We have the heart, the inner nature, the aql, and the guidance, which is the sharia. Type. We are on the highway. The highway of my life and your life goes forward at a certain time it will end in the highway you are driving your vehicle your vehicle could be a huge truck as someone who's in charge of the ummah and it could be a racing car and it could be a normal car and could be a very special vehicle okay suv it depends you and your risk and your responsibility however whether you have a big truck or small car you have to stop by the gas station. <laughs> Fuel. All of us, regardless of your duty, your speed, your load, we have to stop. Every few hundreds of miles, a stop is must. So take this from the prayer point of view. This is the fi- one of the great benefits of the five times. We reconnect with Allah five times by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. If I'm under big pressure, under zulum, under whatever, when I say Allahu Akbar, I'm just reminded. And by the way, takbiratul ihram, when we say Allahu Akbar, when I start my prayer to say it loudly, it's rukun. It's mandatory. I have no right to start the prayer by saying it in my heart. I can't say it. I said it in my heart. The prayer is not valid. One of possible divine wisdoms behind it, I need to remind myself, by myself, from my tongue to my ear, that Allah is the greatest. Say, Allahu Akbar. I'm talking about the prayer now. Let's make the same analogy about Ramadan. 11 months, ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs, a lot of troubles. We need this body and this heart like this, this abaya, if I kept wearing this abaya for 11 months, definitely it needs to be cleansed. Tathir, pured, <laughs> cleaned. So my heart, your heart, our hearts needs to be cleansed. How many of us, for whatever reason, very busy, taking care of the family, he's a PhD student, MS student, BA student, working, construct, regardless. May Allah give you barak on what you're doing. Because of our style of life, we don't read the Quran. And maybe we have a justification. We're not doing haram, but we don't read. Or we don't listen. Or we don't listen to the Drus al For whatever reason, Ramadan comes and everything is upside down again. <laughs> you know, Ramadan, it's like in my understanding, just to make it simple, it's like when you decide to do the reformatting for your mobile or your laptop and when you are asked would you like to return it back to the manufacturing settings <laughs> say yes once you do yes by default the system will delete all of the new applications all of the filthy dirty apps that you have kept downloading all the year manufacturing settings Divine settings for our hearts. <laughs> again. Pure again. Cleansing again. Reconnect again. Reschedule again. Prepare yourself again. Listen to the Quran again. Connect with your brothers again. Stop. Stop. Just responding to your desire again. Control your stomach again. Control your tongue again. Your, all of these things. Once Ramadan is finished, as if Allah, well, this is my own words, as if Allah is telling us the following. I forced you to come back again to the right path. 
So I've done Iqamat al-Hujjah, which is establishing the argument. You know the way? Take care of yourself again. <laughs> we will meet you next if you stay the life in 11 months to reset you again. <laughs> Till I, as your Lord, decide to take your soul. So this is how at least I myself look to the month of Ramadan. This is the human way of trying to understand. Simple, humble wording and philosophy. Let's come to the divine way now. How Allah presented Ramadan to us. We came to the simple, humble human. Let's come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very quickly, just to keep it in your mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he presented Ramadan and the siyam in many occasions in the Quran. I just decided to choose the first time you were introduced to Ramadan in our constitution, the Quran, in chapter Al-Baqarah. O believers, fasting is prescribed for you as it was for those before you, so perhaps you will become mindful of Allah. You become aware, scary, loving. All of these meanings, taqwa. So the most important thing to know is Ramadan a matter of testing to stop eating? No. Drink? No. Risking? No, 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 no. All of what I have already explained is just practical, technical tools. The big goal, big aim, training on taqwa. Big. The ultimate. As Allah wants. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so therefore, if someone, if a non-Muslim asks you as a Muslim, what's the aim of Ramadan? We want to feel with poor and needy. Wrong answer. Ramadan is not designed to feel with poor and needy, even though feeling with poor and needy is something highly appreciated. But Ramadan is much more bigger than that. It's just a simple goal. <laughs> to feel with poor and needy, we have tens of other things to show you, which is a simple, humble things in Islam. Ramadan is to train us on taqwa. Taqwa? How? What is the biggest problem that happens with the people on earth now? When they decide to do whatever they want, as long as no one is watching them. Even the highest civil, so-called civilized societies on earth, even if a minister, or a prime minister, or a rich, or an educated professor, whatever, just name it, in the so-called high civil society, if CCTV cameras are not watching, and no one was able to catch him here while doing whatever he, she is doing. How many of them, one of easiest things with them is to commit a crime, as long as he, she can escape with it? The answer, you have it. Millions. No one cares. Ramadan is a training of taqwa. Taqwa of observance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa that Allah knows and he is. Ramadan is a training course on how to give a value for the commander. The idea is not just to stop. What is your evidence, Sheikh? This is just a philosophy. It's very simple. If you are sick, no problem. If you are traveling, no problem. Build fast. <laughs> if a matter of just black and white, no excuse. No excuse even if you are dying. No, 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 no. If you have a, if you are just a, forget sickness now. If you are just traveling. <laughs> traveling, just traveling, okay? You are allowed to break your fast. Very simple. Allah does not want hardship. Allah is just providing us with a tool of purification and the training, divine course, how to be closer to Him. Because our end, 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 biggest goal is to go to the Jannah. Jannah will not be achieved unless if you respected Allah. Respecting Allah means following His commandments. His commandments is covering every single aspect of our lives. To have the power of respecting this God in every single aspect of your life, you need different training courses. One of them is Ramadan. Ramadan is not a matter of hunger and food. It's a matter of I'm hungry, I'm alone, I can eat, no one can see me, but I want to respect Allah. That's it, as simple as that. If I gained this power of respecting Allah through this training course, 
it will be easier for me when I'm about to leave my pillow, my bed, Fajr prayer, cold water, very snow, Fajr prayer, Satan comes, sleep, 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 don't worry, Allah knows you are uh, hard working, Allah will excuse you, I need to fight now, <laughs> I need the willpower. When I have a strong training for a full month on a willpower, it will be used everywhere else. It's like, it's like in my own words, like increasing your, the muscles of your willpower. You go to the gym, you do this kind of increasing for the power of your physical muscles, biceps, triceps, six packs and these things, yes. However, once the muscles are very strong, you can use it in terms of things and hundreds of things in your life. Simplest, if someone's attacking you, just doing it like this, he will be hurt because of your muscles. Your mother is needing something, you have it. If you are hurt for whatever reason, your cure will be easy because you have a strong body. <laughs> so Ramadan is the same thing, the immune system in the body. When you have a healthy food, healthy sleeping, health something, when the virus comes, it will hurt, but with the minimum. But if my body has no immunity system at all, when any virus comes, I'm lost. And this is the whole idea of the AIDS, the HIV. The HIV in itself, it does not kill. It attacks the immune system in your body. Whatever comes, normal flu, it kills. So Ramadan is one of the divine tools how to increase the immunity system. Ramadan is a training course on willpower. <laughs> so take it as this. Don't focus in the whole idea. Ramadan is about food, invitations, social life. Now I will be, they will ask me. No, 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 no. It's beyond that. Do it with the minimum and have the fruit as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from us. Look what Allah continues in next ayah. Shahr Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Hudan lil-nas wa bayinat min al-huda wal-furqan. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ I need this, this part. This month is the month where the final constitution, revelation for humanity was sent. You are in a great time. When Allah decided after 124,000 prophets, 315 messengers to send Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the previous prophets and messengers, they had a physical miracles. The only one who did not have a physical miracle, his miracle was text, scripture, data, information, ilm, knowledge is just Muhammad Because it's the only lasting one to the day of judgment. So that everyone sees it will realize that it is a miracle. The, all of those people, khalas, finished. Finished. Close their files, the final. You are honored that you are following the final prophet. You are honored that you are following the final cream of 124,000 prophets. So you have a lot of things to do. So you need to understand your system. You need to understand the power of the tools that you have in your system. Ramadan is a tool, be careful. A tool of training to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The biggest aim, rida of Allah. Respect for Allah. Accepting what Allah, because look, Technically, practically, what happens on earth, respected brothers and sisters? I always use this simple example because it's seeable. You can, you can measure it. The hijab of the sisters, Muslim sisters around the world. We are about two billion Muslims. If we just randomly said half-half, we have half males, half females. So we have about one billion female Muslim. If those who are below the puberty, for example, level and hijab is not mandatory in them, at least, at least 30%. So we have about 700 million Muslims, they are addressed now to wear the hijab. In reality, how many millions of them they are wearing the hijab? You know the answer better than me. Right. If you go and see, go and see your relatives, your beloved ones, extended families, many of them they don't wear the hijab and they are nice. They are nice. They have a good heart. They love Allah and they pray. But it's very difficult for them. Why? Still. Very difficult. What is the difficult? Go on there. What is the difficult? She's not able to break her own desire, her own style of life, which is the makeup. 
nice skirt, nice shirt, nice t-shirt, nice makeup, hairdo, whatever it is. It's a matter of love, desire. The people start to praising her. Now Islam is asking her, cover up everything, which means stop the channels of admiration and likes and kabbis kabbis and TikTok and something nice, love, all of these things. It's very, very, very strong influence. You have to stop them. From where I will bring this power to stop all of this? You need the power. You need the willpower. They know. They are aware. And they can, okay, Sheikh Idili. Okay. <laughs> My dua will not benefit if you don't want to respect Allah. It's a matter of respecting Allah's commandments. <laughs> but you know, you know, this is the case. To make another analogy, I believe most of us, we drink coffee. And some of us, they can't stop drinking coffee. Just make this simple. If, in theory, this is a theoretical example, philosophical one, okay? Theoretical, philosophical example. If you discovered that drinking coffee is not allowed, how difficult it will be to stop drinking coffee? <laughs> Even if you know. Wallahi, I'm assuming millions of us will not. It's one of the addiction, but it's a halal addiction, okay? So far. Now, who, who realizes what I'm saying? Ask someone who loves the sweets and he's a pre-diabetic or starting to face the problem of the sugar seriously, either or when he's asked to stop the sugar. And basic part of his life based on eating the sweets. I'm talking about halal now. I'm not discussing the haram things. <laughs> so Ramadan comes to break all of these things. To give you what? The will power by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last part of after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finished these two ayah, kutiba alaykum as-siyam, kama kutiba aladim qablikum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an fal yastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun. And we finish with this Meaning, because the Asr is about just probably nine minutes from now. Allah says, when my servants, immediately, after Ramadan and Saul, immediately, when my servants ask you, O Prophet, about me, I'm truly near, I'm close to them. I respond to one's prayer when they call upon me. So let them respond with obedience to me and believe in me, perhaps they will be guided to the right way. When we study the science of tafsir, we have this superficial level of understanding the ayat. The very quick, what's the meaning of this word? What's the meaning of this word? What's the meaning of linguistically? A little deeper level sometimes we say, what is the relation between the order of the ayat? Why do we think when we study as a students of Islamic knowledge in the field of tafsir, Part of the tafsir, we say, what could be the divine wisdom behind the fact that Allah decided to mention what is Ramadan, what is Siyam, immediately, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي This is a question that ulama of tafsir, they study the relation of the chronological order. Why this came after this? Okay? So one of the common sense understanding after realizing the nature of the Qur'an, you could conclude, Wallahu A'lam, that Ramadan and Sawm, if it is done properly and you welcome this gift properly, you will be able to reach the level that you will love in light of, if you want something from Allah. As if the Qur'an is telling you, look, you want from Allah, definitely we want it. All the time you want something from Allah. <laughs> All the time you are asking. Okay, this is one of the best ways to come to this. Do it properly. Which means, fulfill your job in this training course. Therefore, you will be eligible. Two, when you come to, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ فَإِنِّي قريب. As if Quran and Psalm, from the best ways to bring you close to Allah. As if the Quran and Psalm, with the full package, okay? The Quran, the Psalm, and the respect, and the spirituality, and the Qiyam, all of everything, everything, are one of strong tools that will make you eligible to be close, 
to be accepted and to be responded to. In, in light of this, I think none of us but should enjoy the guest, Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فيفوز المستغفرين. إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير and I don't think that you need someone like me to keep reminding you about our duty to our brothers and sisters who are starving who are killed who are tortured, who are under ethnic cleansing and genocide, and everyone is witnessing. Whatever, whoever is enabled to help, money, dua, media, support, whatever. You know your job, and may ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let the blessings of Ramadan to be one of the ways, inshallah, to uncover this kind of bala'ah, ummah, und ummah. Allahumma ameen, ameen. اللهم ارحمنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم اللهم ارحمنا وارحم والدينا ووالد والدينا وأصحاب الحقوق والواجبات علينا يا كريم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم وداوي جرحاهم يا الله واشف مرضاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كن معهم وخفف عنهم وارحمهم رحمة واسعة اللهم أطعم جائعهم واروي عطشاهم يا رب العالمين وانتقم يا الله ممن خذلهم من خونة العرب والمسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إيمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة